I'd like to welcome you to our panel and in a few minutes a video show about the uh, family camp at Echo Hill Ranch from this summer. This is a pioneering um, project that uh, uh, we founded two summers ago in 2011 and it is the only camp in the country that brings an entire kinship family to our camp, to our ranch, for a three-night, four-day family camp. Uh, this year it was tremendously successful, as it was last year. And we, this is a very unusual partnership between uh, the state, the county, uh, University of Houston Downtown Center for Family Strengths, and, uh, and ourselves as a private vendor, a private business, Echo Hill Ranch. We, I own, part own, and direct Echo Hill. It's been a children's camp for 60 years. And this is the first time that we've had the opportunity and the leadership, and we've been able to raise enough money from our alumni to support this kind of adventure. We look at this uh, as a project to, that we're all learning from and that we're building and that we want to make this a regular part of the Kinship Care Program out of Harris County because we think it's so important in terms of the well-being of the kids and of the families. So I think I'd like to just go down the panel and let's ask you to introduce yourselves briefly and then I'll ask Christina to start a little bit. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Christina Belcher. I work for the state of Texas with Children's Protective Service. I'm the Kinship Program Director. So when children come into care and we place them with a relative, our program is that caregiver's worker. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Debbie Mendez, uh, caregiver to Brianna Mendez and recently adopted so I can call myself mom. Hello. I'm Dolores Taylor, and I'm a caregiver for two children ages 6 and 10. Good afternoon. My name is Wallace Taylor, and I'm with the Kinship Care Program, and I'm a caregiver to two of my grandkids. And this is my wife here on my right. Thank you. I'm Linda Bowles. I have uh, taken on four grandchildren and recently taken on a fifth relative child. Um, I'm single and live in Cleveland, Texas. I'm Chuck Hart, born and raised right here in Houston, but uh, haven't lived here since I left the University of Houston many years ago. Uh, <laughs> I'm assistant administrator to Roger at Echo Hill in charge of the facilities. Hello, my name is Philip Brush. I'm a counselor at Echo Hill. I've been at Echo Hill about 15 years, and I've worked the last two family camps. Hi there, my name is Ben Silberman, and um, I've been a counselor for the last three years at Echo Hill Ranch, and the uh, last two summers at the family camp, uh, working primarily with uh, sports and in the horseback uh, riding ring. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, let me just uh, uh, ask Christina to talk for a couple of minutes about the camp. Um, I think you can stay in your seats if you want to talk, or if you prefer to stand, you can. <laughs> I have a tension deficit, so sitting is not a choice for me. But uh, we were uh, very welcoming when Dr. Friedman came to us with this offer. So our department actually uh, picked the families that went on the camp. Um, and uh, the camp can hold up to maybe 10 families. Uh, so we take 10 families, and what's wonderful about this camp is a lot of things that uh, people offer to children that are in uh, CPS custody usually are donated to the child only or to the birth parents. But this way, we're able to take care of the caregivers that are aunt, uncle, grandparents, cousins, fictive kin, siblings that are caring for our kids. And studies do show that kids placed with relatives do much better uh, when they go through our system. And so this was an opportunity, Dr. Freeman opened it up to the whole house. So whoever lives in their home, so their biological children can come, the children they're caring for can come, um, and uh, it makes for a wonderful camp that way. So we're not excluding any family member in the home. And uh, 
One of the things, are we sharing about, okay, one of the sure, things yeah. that we did on camp, each family, is you make your memory book. This was the memory book that uh, I made with Sarah Medina. She went with us. She's a kinship <laughs> worker. And uh, this is our memory book. And feel free to come and look at it. It tells every day what we did. And it has a wonderful picture of all the camp staff in here. And there was actually, let's see, 27 staff members that put on this camp. And they treat you like you're at a five-star hotel. Um, <laughs> even though you're outdoors with no air condition, your roommates are ants and bugs and spiders. <laughs> but you're, you never forget that you're at a five-star hotel when you have staff like this uh, treating you like gold. So feel free to look at our book um, and our wonderful adventures and the things that we got to do. Um, horseback riding, swimming, hiking, all kinds of wonderful things. The other activity that you do as a family is you actually make your own flag. Every morning we raise the flag um, as a group. But this was the flag that um, we made as a family. And this square here is kind of what the camp looks like. So there's our cabins. There's a horse. The horses run free all day long. Um, <laughs> so do puppy dogs and donkeys. <laughs> but uh, tell them where you where you have the flag hanging these days. What now? Tell, let them know where you have the flag oh, we hanging. Oh, ha we have it actually hung at our work site. We have a little <laughs> display about the camp and um, to remind everyone that you know our program is here for the caregiver, um, which our our agency has a worker for the mom, you know, a worker for the child, but we're actually here for the caregivers. Uh, what else can I say about the camp? I mean, it, the benefits um, are tremendous. Um, our goal is protected and connected. So our kids stay connected when they're placed with relatives. Um, so I'll pass it on so the caregivers can show how it benefited their family. Thank you, Chris. Debbie, go ahead. I may add that Brianna was my niece, uh, and she came to my home at six years old. Um, she's now eight, uh, matured as 40, <laughs> but uh, she did come with a lot of fears and naturally so being taken away from her home. Uh, but when we went to camp, uh, I was really absolutely astonished how well that she took to the staff, naturally so, because the staff was incredibly uh, well-schooled or, or just knew how to deal with the children for some reason in a very unique way. So it was very surprising to see her just go with them. Uh, leaving and uh, abandoning a lot of fears uh, took uh, to many children there, especially Diamond, uh, and um, just had a wonderful time. Um, of course, she didn't want to do archery before you know it. She's doing archery. Uh, she would not even think about going in the water, and there before you know it, she's gone, and uh, to see her run and having fun and enjoying ourselves. Uh, I just can't uh, express uh, in so many words uh, as now being a mom to replace those memories that will always probably stay with her, but, if, but to replace such mem memories of uh, her past to her future uh, with good positive memories, uh, such as the ones she has about camp and speaks to it all the time. Uh, but she wanted everybody to know that she really enjoyed her time there. And um, I don't know how, uh, those are just priceless. Uh, they, it's very difficult to put in words, to see her fear being uh, um, conquered, I would say. Uh, is just absolutely priceless to me. Uh, to think as the caregivers, too, uh, that going through the system can be very systemized in itself, uh, but 
to have someone knock in the door and says, I'm with the kinship program and I'm here to discuss your needs as a caregiver. Um, I asked her to repeat it like three times. What a, are you kidding me? You know, so uh, I can't thank you enough for that department as well. Diamond and Tarion, those are our grandchildren. And for us, the experience, it brought out a side of the children that we didn't know they had as far as the activities. I remember, this is one of my most memorable moments about being at Echo Hill along with other things, but this one in particular was the six-year-old Tarion. I woke up looked out of the window of my bunker. He was outside learning how to hit a ball. And I laid in bed for about 15 minutes and I watched a six-year-old kid who's extremely reserved outside with a counselor that he trusted. And I was like, oh my God. And this counselor was so patient with him this kid, when I tell you he hit the ball out of the ballpark, and his grandma was cheering him on from the window. <laughs> that was a special moment for me. It touched my heart to know that the counselors has so much love, and it's love that you can't go to college and learn. And they were sharing it with these children and when we left the camp, I asked myself, everything, the activities, the counselors, all of the, the caregivers, everything was like so perfect. The counselors, there was not a flaw anywhere. And I, couldn't, I could not see a flaw anywhere. And I was like, how is that possible? And I summed it up by saying a four-letter word, love. There was so much love displayed to these children. And these children come from broken homes, and they're not receiving the love that they need. And it's our job as caregivers to make sure these kids have the love, the affection, everything that they need to grow up and become someone one day. Someone who's, in other words, they're going to be, they're going to take care of us. These are children that's going to take care of us as we age. They're our future. And I would like, and there are many other things that I, I could go on and on and on. As a matter of fact, I wrote a speech. I was up to 3 o'clock this morning writing a speech. And I left it, <laughs> actually it's in the car. It's in the car. But it's okay. Because I'm speaking from my heart. And... I just want to sum this up by saying, when I heard about it, I wasn't excited. I really wasn't. I didn't want to go. But I had to tell myself, it's not about you. It's about the children. And when I got there, and I watched these reserved kids whose fear was conquered, I watched them run around and play, and then they met friends, other children, and they were like, oh my God, Grandma, can, can I go with my friend? We're just getting out of bed. You had not brushed your teeth yet, and you want to go meet a friend? Go right ahead, baby. And it made me feel so good. And I trusted the counselors. That was a, a beautiful feeling for me. I know I'm reiterating some things, but just bear with me. But that was the most important thing for me, is these counselors experienced so much love and affection for these kids. And these kids got a chance to experience some things that we as caregivers couldn't have given them. And for me, I was a big kid. When I seen that big, beautiful campfire, I was like, oh my God, riding a horse? I hadn't been on a horse since I was about 16 years old. And Chuck was so, as a matter of fact, I think Chuck gave me the horse that was the most, what's a good term to use, Chuck? He mean. was, yeah, <laughs> yes, he was mean. And I was like, Chuck, why would you put me on this horse? And, and, but I was not afraid because Chuck was right there with me. He was right on side of me. And I was like, you know, this is, this is good. And for, for an adult who did not want to go, I don't know who had more fun, me or the children. 
But when we got home and the children opened the book and we talked about what did you like most, and the poor kids were so confused because they enjoyed everything. They couldn't even talk because they all had a good time and they loved everybody. And I'm going to go ahead and end this because I know I only have three minutes. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, and I, I would like to thank uh, Roger for being who he is and doing the things that he's doing for our children. It takes a big person with a big heart to do this. So I thank you, Roger. Well, I brought my notes, <laughs> but I don't think I'll, I need to use them. She's pretty much covered everything. I think she read them, uh, everything that I was going to say. Um, you know, in, in, in the black community, it is not unusual for grandparents to raise grandchildren. What is unusual is to be a part of a program that actually helped with raising those kids. And being a caregiver in the kinship program has been um, a lot of help to my wife and I. When we received the notice that we had been chosen to go with eight other families to Echo Hill Ranch, I was delighted, but yet apprehensive. And the reason for it is I really did not want to go to any camp in July in Texas. I know what that was going to be all about, but I am so glad that I, I did, my family and I did go, because we had an excellent, excellent time at that camp. You know, I, I want to say to Dr. Freeman and, and to his staff, I salute you guys. What they did with those kids was just flat out amazing. Each child was treated as if he was out there by himself. Uh, the attention given to the, to the children, the attention given to um, the parents, the grandparents, those of us who were there was just amazing. Um, the food, I think I gained 20 pounds. Uh, <laughs> breakfast, lunch, was, they have some of the greatest cooks out there, and, and I'm telling you, you have some meals that um, go outside the box, so to speak. Uh, the cooks were very, very, very good. They had all kinds of activities for the kids, um, from s swimming in a, in a lake, a natural body of water, rather than a pool, um, archery, um, um, riding horseback, a lot of the stuff that the inner city kids don't really get to do very often. And I tell you, my grandkids really, really enjoyed themselves. And the, the counselors, I can't say enough of those guys and, and girls. They did an excellent job. I don't know who uh, was involved in picking these folks to do what they do. We should send them to Congress. That's what we should do. Because they did an excellent, excellent job. Um, my wife and I and the kids, we enjoyed it. Um, to those who was a part of putting this program together, I salute you. Uh, this should continue. Thank you. Well, it's a little bit... Um hard for me because I, uh, I work with a lot of children um, and I see what uh, the generation now is really doing to our children. And saying that, we go to Echo Hill Ranch. They're broken. Their spirits are broken. Their bodies have been broken. They have been uh, they're scared. They don't want to get out from behind you. But within 24 hours with the counselors and Dr. Friedman, within 24 hours, these kids are acting more like kids. These children have dreams when they leave. It's not, it's the love, it's the, the time that the counselors take with each child, not just one, two. Um, it gives us grandparents and relatives a chance to connect, to become um, a sounding board, if you would say. Um, I've had my children for a number of years, and I will say a sounding board 
is one of the best things that, that we honestly need. But these children, to go to this camp for four days and three nights, can see dreams that were taken that they didn't have because they can only see black when they get to us. So I want to tell Dr. Friedman, the staff, the crumbs on the floor that the dogs get to eat. Y'all are helping bring back the loaves of bread for us to eat. Ooh, I don't know if I can follow up on that. <laughs> what I can see in the kids is that like they kind of discuss when they get out of their vehicle, when they first step foot at Echo Hill, is a lot of looking and tension, maybe if you want to use that word tension, a little scaredy in their eyes and clinging to the caregivers. And within 24, 36 hours, they're kids. They've literally come alive. They're enjoying life again that they may not have enjoyed in their past. And it's just unbelievable that three days, four, four days, three nights experience that the children can get out of the experience at Echo Hill Ranch. Thank you. All right. Well, I think that a lot of the caregivers talked a lot about how much the staff cared and loved these kids. And I just want to say, as someone who did the family camp last year, I look forward the whole year to this coming family camp and how awesome it was going to be. And that is in part because they were saying how much we care about the kids and how much we care about every single kid. That comes from the minute we start talking to these kids how appreciative and how well-mannered and how just everything that you'd want to see in like a growing young person these kids display that they're they just want to be out there they want to learn from you they are so happy to be in this environment taking nothing for granted just excited and that is that is just the most rewarding thing for us so we're feeding off their energy so it's a two-way definite two-way street and, and then hearing all this just made me think back to we had a little staff conference afterwards, immediately after y'all caregivers left. We discussed our thoughts on the camp, and I kind of wondered, how will it, everything carry over once you guys leave the camp? And it's just extremely rewarding and very exciting, hopefully, for another year for me to return, that everything was definitely that we did was worth it and worthwhile, and that something that we love doing is something that's great for other people as well. For me, um, working the family camp was a no-brainer. Um, Roger came to me last year and asked me if, if I'd like to stay and help out with the camp. It was something new, see, see what's going on, what do we have going here. And instantly, after you meet these kids and the caregivers, you realize that what you're doing is, if, if to us it feels so small, but you know it's going to have a big impact. And you don't realize that impact until the whole, the whole thing is over and th the ranch is empty again. And you just can reflect, like Philip was saying, we, we stopped and we reflected. And it's super emotional. It's, you know, it's something so great and so powerful and so necessary to be able to build these family units. Something that, you know, has been proven that children benefit from is a family unit. I mean, the things that have happened to these children to be placed in these situations are just, <coughs> words can't describe. And to be able to have the opportunity to help these kids out and to see the caregivers and be inspired by the caregivers is it's a true blessing it is and I thank Raj and I thank the caregivers um, for the opportunity thank you, man. let me add a little bit in here I may have forgotten but knowing that these children have had I'll use the word trauma in their past they are so polite and so appreciative 
from the minute they get on the ground and start running. They're really, really, y'all have done a terrific job because they're so polite, young, young kids. Really appreciate that. Thank you all. Um, I want to just take a minute and introduce a couple of people that are here. Sarah Medina, who was also at the camp this summer, a staff person in kinship care, and George Ford and Joe Levine, who are two senior administrators here in Houston, who from the very beginning were helpful and, and supportive and helped navigate through all the different layers of bureaucracy, <laughs> the state and the county, and uh, are still with us and still supporting us, and so much appreciate you guys being able to come here. And Alvin Salee, Alvin, who is uh, the uh, director of the Center for Family Strengths, and very busy day coordinating this conference. I appreciate you coming. Alvin's uh, uh, helped from the very beginning. In fact, was able to introduce me to, to George and Joel and Christina, and uh, is still kind of a connector that helps us all uh, develop the program. So thank you guys for being here. Let me ask before we show the video, um, if there is a, uh, one or two brief questions you'd like to ask anyone in the panel, just to, to draw them out more or to, uh, to, to comment. Yes. What's the age range for the children that you uh, accept them in? Christina, do you want to well, take that? We, uh, started, um, we started with an age range between 6 and 14. But like I said, uh, Dr. Friedman is very generous. When we look at the makeup of the family, we have a family that really wants to go. We kind of stretch the guidelines. So this year we had a four-year-old that did wonderful, and then the oldest child was 16. Uh, so, and then we had families of different sizes uh, also. We had a family of uh, four kids with two parents. So they were, it was two cousins that had all their cousins in the home. Um, and then we had families as little as two, you know, so it's a, uh, uh, a, a wide range. Though I, I told our staff I'm looking forward to the summer that we can open up our little daycare center at the ranch and I know we got counselors that are willing to love and take care of a little baby in the morning while their caregivers get to experience the ranch. Not yet, but other questions that you had? Dan? Excuse Well, for me and Brianna, um, I saw a lot of, uh, like I said, her fears uh, immediately improve, and it continues. On the ride home, she, I've got to learn how to swim. You got to put me in swimming lessons, you know. <laughs> and so it's a long list of things that she's made a list that she'd like to do. Uh, uh, so I realize as a caregiver that I have to enhance those things that she found about herself. She wants to swim, she wants swimming lessons, uh, she wants to go ride a horse, uh, you know, so she has these list of things, uh, I gotta go get an archery fade. Uh, so it's a long <laughs> list of things, um, and I don't know about the horse thing, but we're, <laughs> we're gonna work on these things. But uh, she's found a friend in Diamond. We're getting together. I've already had another child come to my home and spend the night. Uh, so uh, going on uh, relationships that we've met uh, with each other. So for the caregivers also, uh, the vending, the sound voice for each other. We had similar uh, uh, issues that we've gone through, so it's easier for us to talk about it with each other uh, and to talk about our kids and because they have the similar fears and, and issues uh, that we can help each other on. One, one of, just to add, to, one of the things Debbie said when I saw her at lunch today was, we've all, uh, Carlos and Robert have already had a sleepover, and Robert's uh, in another family. And one of the things that we have noticed and are noticing in more this fall is what Debbie is saying. The community gets built among the caregivers as friends and also among the children. 
um, a community that did not exist before and that continues out of its own energy and and that has to do with the the intimacy and the and the shared experience that they have in just three or four days at the ranch. Because remember, Quite remarkable. Th this camp is a unique experience that they're all relative or fictive kin raising their you know somebody that's related to them. So for these children, this was the first time these children were all together and could say, "You mean she's raising her grandchild too? That's her cousin." That's not really her mom. So they were all in the same situation all together, and that's what made this so unique. And I think that's what helped the children relax and feel comfortable because they were all the same. I experienced two things overall, the other things that I experienced. And one was just nice to bump elbows and talk uh, with other caregivers. You know, sometimes you, when you're doing this type of thing, you, you think you're out there by yourself. But this particular campsite and bringing all the caregivers together, it gave us an opportunity to talk to one another, and we found out that we were experiencing some of the same things. As far as the children's concerned, um, I know my two grandkids, I learned something that I didn't know, and, and they've been with me all their lives uh, as far as being around me before they came actually to live with me. Uh, and I didn't know that my little six-year-old grandson could play baseball. And to, uh, I was trying to get a little sleep, but his grandma was making so much noise. Um, <laughs> and she asked me to look out the window. And he was knocking the cover off that baseball. I had no idea he was interested in baseball. But I can assure you, next summer, he will be on a, someone's baseball team. Thank you. <laughs> One other quick question? Can yes. I Um, the way that we start out to select families is that we look for families that the state has uh, custody of the child. So we have temporary custody and we have permanent managing custody. We do not choose families that we only have temporary custody uh, because of legal issues. You have to get the parents permission to allow the child to go. There are several uh, children that the state has custody and the goal is either permanent placement with a relative or their relative adopting the child. So that's how we first pick families, is to, depending on the child's permanency goal. And then we pick by the age range. You know, if they have infants, it's not a really appropriate camp for them. So then it goes to age, and then it goes to which caregivers really want to go camping with no air. You know, it comes down to that. And then we're limited to 10. And since it is a four-day camp, a lot of people can't take off work and things like that. But it starts with permanency plan and uh, legal uh, custody. And I am not aware of one for foster parents. Uh, I think there's one in California. We've had a caregiver talk about that in California they do one for foster parents, but uh, we only do this with the relative placements. So. There are some private agencies who offer different things for their caregivers. I know, like, consultant offers different things for The, um, okay, the, uh, just to share with you, our, our stated goals for the camp are to um, create positive experiences that bring the kinship care families together, uh, to build self-confidence and trust in the children, to help the children uh, learn how to better regulate their own emotions and moods, and we believe that when kids have contact in nature, that this helps them calm themselves and learn how to calm themselves. And finally, we want to create an environment where caregivers get an opportunity to meet and to relax and to enjoy themselves. The additional benefits are the community building that takes place among the kids and the caregivers that goes on well after camp is over, and how inspiring this is for our staff. Uh, we have a wonderful staff that we spend a lot of time hiring. We spend a lot of time preparing for this special weekend. And these are young people that are searching, many of them, for their own careers. They're either starting college, finishing college, looking for work. And um, when they talk about the experience, they talk about how inspiring it is to them. 
Uh, uh, Michelle Obama's uh, quote the other night reminded me of what I think a lot of our staff feel at the end of the weekend, that, that in their career, what's going to be more important is the difference they make in people's lives rather than how much money they make. And I think those kinds of values get reinforced and are exciting for our staff and add to the, to the kinds of careers and schooling that they begin to look for. So I want to welcome you all to the camp because that's what this video is going to do. You are going to feel like you're there. It was uh, filmed and edited by dear friends and alumni of Echo Hill, Andy and Becky Riceberg, who have a professional photo lab service in Dallas. And this isn't really a documentary. It's really going to open the door for you all to come to camp with us. I think you're going to love it. This is our first public viewing, so, and you guys haven't seen it. So I want you all to come and sit in the chairs so you can see it and not be in the way. We have to come back from camp now, back to city life. It's, you see how hard it is for all of us. And, uh, it's a wonderful video, a lot of love in it. And um, I think it captures a lot of what it was like to be there. Uh, just some uh, kind of gut responses to the, uh, to the video from those of you all that are watching first and then maybe from the panel. Just, yeah, John. Thank you. Any special parts you loved, or? I just the, the, whole, the whole, the whole, you know, I haven't heard the panel earlier, but like, everyone feels together, but like it's happening. Mm -hmm. and the way that, because the concern I had was, well, you know, after several days, and what's the carryover effect, and your, the way you link, uh, that they will look back. Mm-hmm. That's good. Other just gut reactions as you watch this? Yeah. We, this group, well, a lot of them, if we still have custody of the child, they have an ongoing kinship worker. Um, and then we also encourage the same thing that's a, uh, a, a secondary of this is the support group they make with each other. Um, so they're allowed to share information with each other, become a support group. Uh, so until the state gives them official custody, then they have us for their support. After that, then they're on their own. So we're hoping these connections is what keeps them going through. Yes, if they would like to. <laughs> yes. What I like about the video was a lot of interaction um, from the counselors and the, the parents and the children. Those are, you know, that's something really good that uh, you see that happiness in all parties. Mm -hmm. That was a good thing. And, you know, a lot of these children are probably from the city and they're not familiar with the, you know, the, the life out in the country. And this is something new. Well, it brought me to tears again, but <laughs> you see my baby up there and smiling, and she still talks about it. Um, each of us have a, a traumatic story, and what is not too much mentioned is that in kinship, it's a unique nucleus in itself because you have to deal as a family. Um, so my particular story deals with my brother. So uh, what we have to understand here, it breaks up the family in some cases. Uh, it will have a tendency to do that. Um, but to see her smiling and laughing and just having fun and fearful as you see, reluctant to do certain things and one part of a video not seen there is I'm watching her and she's running by and doesn't even, 
acknowledge or say, hey, I'm going, and she's just gone. But it was my thing, too, to, as you said, to, that it's okay to let her go because we do hold them very close because of what they've been through. That was Brianna with that wonderful sort of nonchalant shrug after she hits the archery target. It's a beautiful moment to, uh, to have captured on film. Uh, and I'm yelling, get the camera, get the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to say something. Uh, Tarion received this patch uh, for archery. He was determined, determined to hit a bullseye. Well, he received this patch and for him, it's like a gold medal. <laughs> so now that we're home and of course the children, they become sad and at some point, what I do, I break open our little uh, what is it? Oh, memory book. <laughs> and in that memory book is the patch. And we start talking about the patch and things that took place, and you'd be surprised of the smiles and how they've forgotten their sadness instantly. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, the memory book really means a lot to us as the caregivers, and it really helps put a smile on the children's face when they're sad. That was one thing that happened that um no one really talked about. It was one of the activities that I thought went over very, very well. Uh, late one evening, we went out to have a campfire and um, to make what was called Echo Hill Burgers, I think. <laughs> and and um, when we started out, I'm thinking, burgers on a campfire, okay? And they built a fire and the, the counselors did. And, these burgers were made very, in a very unusual way. <laughs> and, and, and I'm saying, I'm thinking, uh, that's not going to be good. But I can assure you, after the second burger, <laughs> those burgers were good. And the kids really, really enjoyed that campfire and that whole event. I believe if this type of family togetherness um, from the bottom of my heart will continue that we'll have much more success rate in the family uh, kinship department. Our success rate is already uh, high, um, yet caregivers give up everything, and I mean everything, to keep these babies together. And Dr. Friedman gives us a chance for these children to see that they can become who and what their intent in society needs to be. And I want to thank Dr. Friedman, the University of Houston, and everyone concerned that's even given a penny toward this because it makes all the difference in the world to these babies so they can see that they can complete college, that they've got a chance, and it's not in a penitentiary. So I want to thank everyone involved. Thank you. Uh, I have a question, I guess, directed to you, Christina. Is there any reason or is there a need to do a follow-up on the kids after they've been to Echo Hill and see what their actions are three months, six months, a year later, how they hopefully have progressed because of their experience. That's just a thought of mine. And even on the, on the, on the caregiver side, too, to see how they've progressed. Right. I think that would be a wonderful idea. I know Dr. Friedman and I have spoken about that, doing a, a, a survey um, and seeing where these families are, you know, six months later, where the children are, you know, six months later, are they still with the same relative? You know, do they still reflect on these positive memories they have created? And have they ventured out to do any camping trips on their own? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, type deal. But we have spoke about that. I think that would be good that we, you know, we, this is our second year, so we've got two pools of families to see about uh, the unique experience and how it does benefit their families. 
And I'm always surprised. You ask about picking families, and it's almost like a random. You know, if, you, if we have PMC of the child, if they're right in the right age, and you say yes, then you get to come. But I'm amazed when we get there how we all fit. I mean, every family fits. Every child fits there. It is, amazes me every single time because I worry about that. I worry about, you know, we're going to take a family. They're not going to be able to walk around or, you know, the kid's not going to like the outdoors. They're going to hate bugs so much that they want to go home. Like uh, <laughs> Mrs. Hicks said, they don't want to go home. <laughs> now, once they get there, no one wants to go home. And it's amazing how that environment just leaves all your problems back at home. We had no problems while we were there, you know. Yeah. We were just enjoying that, that time. So I'm always amazed when we pick families because it's almost random how well everyone does, how well everyone connects. Another question or comment from the group? We're, we're almost to the end of our time. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Uh, we are still talking to each other and the children, uh, setting up uh, uh, future appointments where the children and ourselves can meet with each other. But uh, there's also groups, uh, one originated from the University of Houston, Relatives as Parents group, and it's throughout Houston. And uh, that's how, actually, I found out more information about the kinship program. It's called Relatives as Parents. Uh, we meet at a library uh, once a month, and that was very good for me as a caregiver so that we could sit down and talk with each other and uh, get together as a group with the children as well. So I I'm sure that that's something that we'll continue to do. But I think it's very good for all the caregivers and the children. I think it's an essential thing to do. It helps to relieve a lot of tension and such that you could talk about. And then we all have good ideas of what we went through with our children that would help. Anything from eating problems to, because the children come with a lot of problems that were, uh, you know, constantly trying to find a better way to deal with them. Um, night terrors, all, all these things that we could all talk about and know uh, what dealing with children that have been traumatized. We're going to have to bring the meeting to a close. And I want to thank, uh, thank you all for coming out on a work day. And thank Ben, Chuck, Christina, Melinda, and Wally, and Dee, and Debbie for sharing so much from your, your hearts here. Um, it, it's, a, um, it's a wonderful experience. I, I, I feel like uh, saying stay tuned. We're just beginning. Uh, and uh, we will uh, follow up with some research uh, this, this winter and hopefully uh, we're going to have many more camps like this and expanding the program and getting the word out uh, around the state and around the country about how important it is to create these kinds of experiences for, for kinship care families. Uh, this is a all of you are here and are partaking uh, in what is really, I think, a, a pioneering effort that in the future is going to be more and more a part, a regular part of this kind of program. So thank you all, and I'm going to give the panel a hand for being here. We, uh, we will uh, let all of you know this, uh, this uh, DVD will be uh, online and available for viewing and 
uh, on the internet. And uh, Christina has a copy to share with you all back at the agency. I think it would be something really lovely to show to staff. And uh, anytime you need a break and calm down, it's a nice video to watch. Come back to camp. <laughs> Thank you all very much.